Hey everybody, welcome back again to A New Way to Museum. I'm Dr. Reese Barrick here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History and we're going to talk today a little bit about one of my favorite types of animals in the history of life. Um, and we're here at Sahara Sea Monsters where we can see a long neck plesiosaur or an elasmosaur um, that's up here back behind me. And this particular one is Zephyrosaura. Zephyrosaura found in Morocco, very cool animal. And these types of animals have a lot of features that just make them sort of bizarre and very cool and amazing that, that, uh, that they lived. So for example, Zephyrosaura here is a perfect cool example. They've got this small head on this huge body. And in this small head, they've got some very long, sharp, pointy teeth, and which means that they're fish eaters. They're living in the ocean. Um, they're fish eaters. And what's fascinating is their eyes are on the top of their heads. So they're really seeing up. They can't really see down below them very easily. So these guys are actually mostly swimming below schools of fish and popping up to catch them with these very cool, neat, sharp, pointy teeth. That's pretty cool. But these little small heads are on these very elongated necks. And there's a whole bunch of different types of elasmosaurs. Um, and they have, they have a cool way of getting longer necks. You know, if you think of a giraffe, each vertebra stretches out and gets longer, but they keep the same number of cervical or neck vertebra as do a lot of other mammals. But with uh, these plesiosaurs, they get long necks by adding numbers of vertebra. And you can get 32 to up to 76 or so vertebra in a plesiosaur. Uh, Zephyrosaurus has somewhere in the mid to upper 60s for numbers of vertebra. So you get this really cool long neck. Uh, this long neck is fascinating, but it causes some problems if you really think about it because when it has to breathe, it's breathing out of the nostrils of this small head and the air's got to pass down its aerial passage all the way along the neck before it gets back down to the lungs way back here. That's means every breath there's a lot of dead air space all along here that has to be pushed out and back in from a little small head and not only that because they're living in the ocean there's a lot of water pressure around the animal so just to be able to expand its lungs takes a lot of air and, and so it's it's a kind of a tough thing for something with this long of a neck to live in the water to be able to breathe very well which makes it kind of fascinating and really cool. Um, other things about long necks that make it interesting, as we think about sometimes these guys that might swim along the surface of the ocean and pick their head way up out of the water so they can dive down and get fish. Then the, with the fish not knowing where they are, where they're coming from. But the thing about it is with these vertebra, they're all locked in pretty tightly um, and you have to realize that this is a, a fairly skinny neck and the center of gravity for the animal is way back here. So with the center of gravity of the animal way back here, it's going to be very, very difficult to lift its head and neck up out of the water. So there's a, they're not really doing a lot of high lifting of their necks. They're probably keeping them pretty straight out in front of them. So part of the small head is probably because you can sneak into, uh, you know, schools of fish or underneath them and pop up without them seeing the huge body behind it. So it's still kind of a cool, useful thing. But they're not going to be able to lift their heads vertically very much. Um, so if they're keeping them pretty straight, then they're still swimming. And the other issue is with the long neck is as long as you're going straight, you can swim pretty fast, but if you try to bend your head one way or the other, then the drag from the water is going to slow you down very quickly or kind of s 
snap your neck back a bit. So it makes it sort of some very interesting constraints on being able to swim if you're a, a Zafarosaur. Um, other things we know is these guys lived basically near shore. They didn't swim out in the middle of the deep ocean. They stayed fairly close to shore. Uh, they're usually found in some shales. And, but the other cool thing is some of these guys have been found with gastroliths or stomach stones, which they would have to get by swimming up, maybe even up into some rivers and swallowing and eating stones that they would have to swallow from their little small mouth. And again, swallow stones that have to go all the way down <laughs> this long neck to get back into their stomachs. Gastrolith meaning a stomach stone, which would give them some ballast back here. Uh, plesiosaurs are all sort of known to do this, which gives us some interesting constraints. They're not going to be swimming out over the deep ocean. There's no way they can find any sort of uh, stones to swallow. So that's another fascinating, cool thing about these guys. Um, and then, sort of to top it off, you come back and look at these giant paddles. All right, so you've got the big bodies back here. One of the things, you know, when we looked at whales, when we've looked at mosasaurs, they've got really long tails. Uh, the plesiosaurs, especially the elasmosaurs, have very short tails. So they're not really swimming with their tails. Uh, a lot of them are depicted with little bits of flukes, which maybe could help them with steering, but they're not powering themselves with their tails. They're swimming with these giant paddles. And you can see some fairly uh, heavily uh, strong bone for their, their sternum, for their chest plates, and for their hips, which helps them with lots of muscle attachments so that they have very strong uh, front and hind flippers, especially in the front. And these things are really strongly attached, so they are going to be swimming with just the coordinated movements of their paddles. So they're swimming with their paddles, keeping their necks fairly straight, and swimming underneath fish and look, trying to stay towards the bottom so that they can look up to find their prey up above them. Uh, and still getting up and figuring out how to get a good breath through that long neck to feed into their lungs. Just all kinds of interesting sort of constraints and issues they have to deal with, but they survived for millions and millions of years, and I just think that they are, it makes them like one of the most unique, awesome creatures in the history of our planet. And so I just sort of wanted to share this cool feature um, of Zafarosaura from Morocco on a new way to museum and give you maybe a, a little deeper appreciation for how cool elasmosaurs are. So thanks for joining us again. Give us a like and a share and we'll see you again on a new way to museum. Thanks for joining us in a new way to museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.